What's going on guys? Spot on Tech here for episode 1 of the Tech Spot. Today we're going to be going over Mac OS X 10.7 Lion. We just got our hands on this and we're going to be showing you all the new features there is to this new operating system here. Um, so the first feature that we're going to be going over is called Launchpad. Now Launchpad is like an iOS style of app, app viewing, <laughs> for lack of a better term. But basically what it is, it's what you see on your iPad. When you open up your iPad, for example, um, you're gonna be you're gonna be presented with with this. Pretty much what you're seeing right there on the screen, like right there. Um, all your apps shown in one place. You can arrange them however you wanna arrange them. You just click and hold down and you can arrange them however you would like. You can even put them in folders. Um, for example, they have the utility folder down here that's pre-installed. Um, with all of your utilities and whatnot, and you can feel free to arrange apps freely however you want them to be arranged. Um, one thing that should be noted about um, Launchpad is that you can't uninstall apps that weren't downloaded from the Mac App Store. For example, ScreenFlow, which I'm using to record right now, I can't delete it um, from here. Um, usually, if you download an app from the Mac App Store, um, a little X would show up in the corner here allowing it to just uninstall it in all of its files, which is a really great feature. But what Apple wants you to do is download apps from the App Store. So they're trying to really regulate the, their whole App Store thing so that you download apps from there and then it'll add a new feature into your operating system. For example, none of these apps were downloaded from the App Store. They're all default apps, so you can't uninstall any of them. They, don't, they just don't give you the option to, to really do that. So that's just how that goes. Some people might think it's unfortunate. It's not that bad. You can just delete them yourself, but it's something to be noted. All right, so the next feature that we're going to be looking at is Mission Control. Basically, what Mission Control is, you swipe up with four fingers, and you're presented with all of your open desktops. Right now, there's only one open, but I could add another one just by going up here and clicking. Um, so let's open some apps. Let's open Safari here. Um, let's open iTunes over here. Just let it load up a little bit. This is the first time I... All right, there we go and then you have your dashboard over here so basically if you swipe back and forth with three fingers you can go between desktops uh, yep just like that one thing that should be noted is that I recommend if you want to install line you have at least four gigs of RAM so update it you don't need to because I'm only running on two gigs but what I did notice is that with two gigs uh, it tends to be a little laggy at times for example swiping back and forth you can kind of see the lag there it's it's not bad and I don't mind it but some people will so it should be noted so that's there um, and basically take your four fingers back to mission control you swipe up on your pad and there you go you have all of your things here you can move them around you take one uh, maybe won't let you do that but but yeah there you go you can move them around uh, let's say you want to get rid of one you just exit out at the top and they all fell back into uh, your desktop here and now they're both in the same desktop right there um, that's that's mission control um, another thing if you take your f uh, four or five fingers and push open like that I don't have any windows open here let me show you so let's say we open these you have a ton of apps open at the same time and you just want to show your desktop you take your four or five fingers you go on the trackpad and you push up like that and they're out of your way you see your desktop perfect um, so that's that's um, that's an expose feature that they added in here um, alright let's go into full screen apps and check that out okay so full screen apps self-explanatory you just come into Safari or whatever app you want to go into and you click the little um, you click the two arrows up at the top right hand corner of your screen like so and it pulls it into a full screen app once you open a full screen app it becomes its own desktop see if I were to open mission control you can see that it just became its own desktop all by itself over here so I can swipe back and forth between desktops dashboard and everything and the full screen app is its own it's it's its own thing so that's how that goes um, let's go to the start page here and let me show you another feature in Safari so a brand new feature in Safari is pinch to zoom and iOS style zooming and scrolling so you take your two fingers like you would in your iPhone iPod touch or iPad and you just pinch and there you go you just zoom right in now snow leopard did have zooming I will give it that but it didn't have the iOS style zooming that all of us have grown to know and love 
Um, once you're zoomed in, you take your two fingers and you can scroll throughout the page just like that. And it's that simple. Uh, something that should be noted in Snow Leopard is by default, iOS style scrolling is on, meaning that you take your two fingers and push up on the trackpad and it goes down and take a few two fingers, scroll down on the trackpad and it goes up. Apple likes to call this natural scrolling because it's almost like you're dragging the page in the direction that you want it to go. So, um, but that can be turned off and I'll show you that in a, in a little bit if you're one of those people who do not like that kind of scrolling. All right, so let's cl close the full screen app. And then we're brought right back to the desktop. It got rid of the other screen and we're good to go. All right, here's another thing that I that um, that's really cool. It's called, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Resume. I'm pretty sure it's called Resume or, or Versions, one of those two. So basically with this is that your apps open in the same state that you close them in. For example, in text edit, if I were to type that, and just exit out. It does have to save once, but only once. So you save it once, and now text edit's closed. Now let me open it back up, back into the file that I was in, of course. Okay, so we're in the file. Let's say I add something else. This is an edit. I close that, done. Open it right back up. Oh, man, <laughs> didn't work. All right, um, hold up. Okay, let's say I quit text edit when it's open and reopen it. There we go, we're, we're right back. So you have to quit the whole app actually to uh, get the feature to work. But um, see if you, whatever, whatever state you quit the app in is the way it will open back up. Yeah, no wonder it wasn't working because I didn't quit the app, I just closed the window. Yep, so whatever state you quit the app in is the way it will open back up. Just add more quit the app without even saving because it does it itself. That's part of the line. It saves everything. It saves your progress as you go. Open it back up. And there you go. Right back open. This is, this applies to every single app, including Safari. Let's say I go to Engadget.com. So I open up Engadget and I quit the app. I quit Safari. Next time I open up Safari, look where I'll be. Right back at Engadget.com. Exactly where I quit. Very convenient, very awesome, uh, and that's a great new feature. And I think that will save a lot of people. For example, let's say you're working at school and the whole the power goes out everywhere. You turn the computer back on, you open the app like right where it was, and you're good to go. Your all of your information was saved. They call that resume inversions, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you. Um, let's take a look at some of the other uh, minor features here. Those were the main ones. Um, they have new desktop wallpapers for all, all of you who are wondering. Um, you can modify your trackpad settings in here, and so on and so forth. The last feature we're going to be going over today um, in, in our video is, is um, AirDrop. I can't really demonstrate this to you right now um, because I don't have another um, computer in my house running Mac OS 10.7 Lion, but I will, I will in, a, in a little bit, so I'll post a video of that once I, once I have it. Um, but basically what AirDrop is, think of it as Dropbox for your house and for your for your home. So basically, let's say you have four computers in your house. There will be four different circles here that will appear. And you want to send a file to that computer. Now instead of going into their shared settings over here, like, and then connecting to your computer as a user, et cetera, et cetera, all you're going to be having to do is there's, there's going to be a circle over here. And then whatever file you want to send to that computer, you just click, drag and drop on the circle, and it'll transfer it directly to that computer. The computer will get a notification that you just received a file, and uh, it'll be transferred. Simple as that. Now that's a really cool feature for people who have more than one Macs, more than one Mac in their house running 10.7 Lion. I think that's going to be really great, and it's going to really unify um, like family, household computers, and everything. So, so that'll be definitely cool. Uh, one last thing I did notice in the Finder was they have this new section called All My Files. Now, I don't have many files in here right now because this is a clean install. But um, basically, it shows you all your music files, pictures, documents um, that were recently accessed and used all in one place. Um, it's really simple as that. So um, it's it looks like a cool little feature. I haven't really gotten to try it out yet. There's a lot more Mac OS X line features that I will be informing you guys on, posting new videos 
as as I find them and as new things come up. But until then, uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for more Mac OS 10.7 line videos, iOS 5 videos on both the iPhone 4 and the iPad 2. So just stay tuned for that, and we'll have all the latest right here on Spot on Tech with the Tech Spot. See you next time.